Hello, everyone. I'm Sherry Brockett Binder, and I am the Executive Director at Ripple Community Inc. I just want to thank you all for taking the time to learn a little bit today about our organization. Um, I also want to um, acknowledge Alicia Moyer. Do you want to just wave Alicia, who's here? Uh, my colleague Alicia, who uh, is also joining us and may um, jump in here as well. So, as Erica mentioned, um, we are a nonprofit organization um, working on housing and related issues here in Allentown in particular. So I'd like to just share a little bit about that work um, and also leave lots of room for just discussion and conversation. So I will make an attempt here to go ahead and share my screen, which I think I can do. All right, is everyone seeing the slide? Yeah, great. Okay, perfect. So um, again, this is our organization, Ripple Community Inc. Uh, before I dive into the uh, bulk of our conversation today, I like to just start with some warm up questions. If we were in person, I would make you answer these out loud. So mercifully for um, all of us, we are <laughs> on Zoom. But I just want to go over a couple of questions just to get our uh, kind of brains working together, uh, thinking about some of these issues of homelessness and housing. So I'm not going to ask you to answer these questions right now. I'm just going to ask you to hold on to them, mull them over a little bit as we talk here over the next hour, and we'll return to them um, here in a little bit. So the questions I want to start off with are, what factors lead to homelessness? Uh, what do people who are experiencing homelessness need? And what can be done to end homelessness? <clears throat> All right, got those? All right. <laughs> so I'm going to start just by sharing a little bit about our work and mission. Um, I see some familiar faces here and some new faces. So uh, it might be that some of us are more familiar with RCI than others. So. Uh, just by way of background, Ripple Community Inc. was established in 2015. Um, so we're just about eight years old, a little bit over. And all of our work and our mission really boils down at the end of the day to community and connection. Um, everything that we do, all of our programming, all of our aspirations, everything that we do day to day really boils down uh, first and foremost to relationships and community and connection. We have two core programs that we run. Uh, the first one is called the Community Building Center, and you can see some photos here from our uh, community center, which right now is located on Linden Street in Allentown. The Community Building Center has a really simple, really powerful mission, and that is to be a safe and welcoming daytime space for anyone who needs it. <clears throat> So uh, if you come into the community center on any given day, which I encourage you to, please consider this an open invitation to stop by any time and see us. Um, what you'll see are a group of uh, community members um, who might be in engaged in different activities. Some people might be resting. We might be having lunch, um, uh, socializing in different ways. Um, and in addition to that kind of community piece, our community center has a space that we call our service hub, and that is where our partner organizations come in and provide uh, more specialized services. So you might be familiar with some of those groups, the street medicine team, uh, the parish nurses. Uh, we have the Lehigh County Mental Health Program. We have uh, various recovery programs, um, a group of maybe 10 or 12 different organizations that are there weekly um, to bring these services to our community. Um, which is a model we found works really well because instead of having people kind of go out um, into less familiar or less comfortable spaces, if we can bring these services into a comfortable known space, um, into a trusted environment, people are much more likely to access them and stick with them. So the Community Building Center, uh, we like to say it's the beating heart of RCI. Um, and we believe that because uh, strong neighborhoods begin with safe spaces. Um, we do work primarily, <clears throat> excuse me, I also have one of the various whatevers that are floating around, so I'll do my best to keep my voice going. <laughs> um, so uh, we do primarily work with adults at the community center, and I know sometimes it might be easier to think about the importance of safe spaces for kids or for children, um, but it turns out that 
it's it's no less true for adults. Um, adults need just uh, need those safe spaces um, just as much as anyone, and so that's a part of what we do, um, particularly for um, our adults, our neighbors whose lives have just been a little bit more challenging. Um, the second program we run is our housing program. We'll talk a bit, uh, quite a bit more about this today, but our housing program is called the RCI Village, and the focus of this program is really on providing safe stable housing for um, individuals or family who have either been literally homeless um, or who have just been very housing unstable. Um, so this is a program based on a very highly successful model out of Washington, D.C. called Jubilee Housing. And I'm proud to say that this program, it's about six years old, has been uh, really very successful in its own right. So uh, to date, 88% of all of the residents who have ever been a part of our housing program are still stably housed today, um, which is something we're really very proud of. <clears throat> and the reason why the program is successful uh, is because it has these three components that really work well together to, to provide the level and type of support that people need to be successful in maintaining their housing long term. Um, so the first piece of that is just affordability. So we talk about housing that's deeply affordable, meaning it's just genuinely affordable, even for our uh, lower income households. Um, we add to that a series of wraparound services and one-on-one -on -one support so that people have the support they need to maybe address some of the things that might have contributed to their housing instability in the past. Um, and then really the magic um, piece of the housing program, again, is just a focus on community. So uh, when we house someone, we don't just kind of insert them in an apartment and wish them well. Uh, we're really very intentional about making sure our residents are connected to each other, part of a community, um, able to put down roots in the neighborhood, uh, you know, really, really um, making their apartment home for them. So this program has grown really steadily um, over the past six years. It now we now have more than 30 residents and 19 apartments. Um, to date, we've been able to grow this program and do this work by partnering with landlords uh, and in the uh, for-profit housing market. And we do that essentially by having an agreement with landlords that we then supplement down market rate rent so that they are uh, accessible for our residents. Um, but per our business plan, we are in the process now of moving toward a new model that's really based on our uh, direct nonprofit ownership of our own housing units. And I'll, I'll uh, say more about that here in a little bit. Okay, so uh, we're here today to talk about housing and affordable housing and homelessness and uh, all of those things kind of fit on one spectrum. They're not separate issues. They're really very deeply interconnected issues. So what I'd like to do now is just take a few minutes to talk about why we at RCI are so focused on permanent housing. So you'll just keep hearing me say over and over, st um, stable housing, permanent housing, long-term housing, um, because there are surely easier things to do <laughs> uh, out in the world, but I would argue that a uh, few things are more important than, than making sure that our neighbors have uh, really good and stable housing. Um, and it is our, uh, as Erica had mentioned, it's really our focus on uh, long-term housing stability that distinguishes our work um, here in the Lehigh Valley. So um, it may have, uh, this question may have come to you uh, when we are out and about and uh, we say that we are running a permanent housing program and that people are willing, are able to stay for as long as it suits them. Um, often one of the next questions we get asked is, yeah, but how long can people really stay? <laughs> Um, in your housing program? And um, it's a it's a good question. And the answer is, as long as it makes sense for them. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to just share a little bit about why we feel so strongly about that. And I want to do that by starting first to talk about homelessness. So I'm sure that many of us here um, are concerned one way or another about homelessness. We might be concerned about how it impacts uh, people we see, we might be concerned about how it impacts um, our neighborhoods or our community. So if you think about uh, people right now in our in your neighborhood and our community in Allentown who are experiencing homelessness, um, where might our unsheltered neighbors sleep tonight? Yep, you're all muted, which makes this tricky. Uh, <laughs> so, 
Uh, when we think about where people sleep, sometimes it's just outdoors, right? We uh, talk about people sleeping rough, um, but often we know that we have, at least in the winter, um, emergency shelters that are open so that our unsheltered neighbors are able to sleep in shelters. So these emergency um, shelters are really important. They're really critical. Um, they are uh, really an important piece of helping us address the immediate crisis of someone being unsheltered because uh, what it really comes down to is that none of us want to see any of our neighbors die from exposure to the elements, right? That's really that's really the basic role of shelters. Um, but another piece of that is even if we had the very best shelter, the very best emergency shelter in the country, um, think about what would still be true of every single person in that shelter the next day, right? So tonight, maybe you need a shelter. People go to the shelter. It's a great shelter. What is true of absolutely everyone in that shelter the next day? Feel free to unmute and jump in, or I'll just keep talking. That's okay, too. <laughs> still homeless. They're still homeless, right? They're still homeless, um, which is obviously not necessarily the the outcome that we're hoping, right? That's not what we're hoping to be true for folks. So the reality is those shelters play a really important role, no matter how many resources we have invest into emergency shelter services, we never really get any closer to addressing the core issue of homelessness itself. Um, and that's because there is really only one solution to the extent that there is a solution to homelessness and that solution is housing. Um, and this is something that if you've uh, uh, been involved with our organization at all, um, you'll hear us say just again over and over. Um, so in other words, we can care and we do care very, as a community, we care very deeply about people experiencing home homelessness. But if we know that what we really need to address homelessness is housing, um, it's even knowing that it's kind of easy to get stuck in this in this crisis work, right? The crisis work of someone right now is unsheltered, someone is unsafe, someone needs a meal. How do we address the uh, immediate crisis situation? And I want to be really clear that like I get that, and we that's something that we face every day, and we are deeply, deeply uh, grateful for all of our partner organizations who work in that space. That space saves lives, and and it's important. Um, but for us as an organization, where we're really coming from is wanting uh, is from a space of wanting to address the issue of homelessness. And to do that, um, what we really need to be looking at is permanent housing. Um, excuse me. <laughs> um, so we need to be talking about housing. We need uh, to be willing to invest in housing um, that meets the needs of our lower income neighbors. And I'll take it just one step further um, to say that, you know, not only is housing um, the only real solution to homelessness, um, but it's really the foundation for a suite of other outcomes that we want to see, not just for ourselves, but for all of our neighbors and community members, things like employment and food security and health and education. Um, so, all right, that's where we're coming from. So that's a little bit heady, I realize. Um, I wanted to just share that by way of saying that this is kind of our working model. It's our theory of change when it comes to housing. Um, but as I mentioned, everything we do ultimately comes down to people. It comes back to our neighbors. So what I want to do is just briefly introduce you to uh, some of our neighbors. So this is Jody and Maria. Um, Jody became homeless uh, several years ago now when she walked out of an abusive relationship. So when we hear someone's walking out of an abusive relationship, we want to applaud that, right? Um, but something we don't necessarily think about is how dangerous it is to do that, right? It's dangerous to stay in an abusive relationship. It might be even more dangerous to try to leave it. Um, but that is the decision um, Jody made. Uh, it was a brave decision, but a dangerous one. Um, but she cho chose to leave that situation with her daughter. Um, and after she made that choice, she did she did all the right things. Um, and by that, I mean, she took advantage of all of the emergency solutions that were available to her at the time, all of the programs that she was eligible for. Um, she went from, uh, she kind of bounced around to a few different um, shelters and emergency spaces. Um, and she eventually landed in one of our partner organizations, which is Family Promise of the Lehigh Valley, which is a, the 
really the only family shelter here in the valley or in Allentown. So having done all the right things, nevertheless, Jody's reality was she was never going to find appropriate housing for herself and her daughter that she could afford. It does not exist. Um, it did not exist then. It does not exist now in our current housing market. So uh, thankfully, Jody came to us through our uh, friends at Family Promise. We were able to move her into an apartment um, where because of this permanent housing model that we follow, she no longer had to be preoccupied with thinking about where are we going to stay next week or next month or maybe a few months from now. Um, when you move into permanent housing, you're able to kind of take those crushing stressors and put them aside for a moment and start thinking about all of the other things, right, in life that you need to um, process and deal with. So uh, with a little bit of support, Jody was able to um, start working full time. So she was able to kind of move into a much better economic position for herself and her family. Her daughter has now started school um, in one of the neighborhood schools. And basically, her life is just on a really different track. Um, and when we think about Jody's story, it could have gone one direction, right? And now it's going a very different direction. And really that only missing piece for Jody um, was having access to that truly affordable, safe, healthy housing where she and her um, daughter could, could stay. Um, and so, you know, just think of the difference that makes, right? Not just for these two, not just for this family, um, but really for, for all of us, right? For the neighborhood as a whole. All right, I just have a few more slides and we can um, chat a little bit. So I hope that um, so that information or kind of some of this information I'm sharing provides some insight into why that why we at RCI do the work that we do um, and why we believe that uh, investments in housing are really investments worth making for our community. Um, at the same time, it's easier said than done, right? Because we know that the current housing market is just, it's deeply challenging and it just seems to get be getting more and more challenging. Housing is expensive, the market is fickle. Um, there's this kind of crushing statistic you may have seen that was published uh, a year or so ago now by the Lehigh Valley Planning Commission that says in the Lehigh Valley, we have a shortage of 14,480 housing units for households with incomes of $25,000 or less. So those are considered extremely low income households. It's a crushing number, right? It's just, a, it's, like a, it's like a take the wind out of you large number. Um, and, you know, when we think about what affordable means for some of our lower income households, uh, you know, we can look at the market. So I have, I have a few, uh, some data here, some housing data. This is a little bit dated, actually. Things have gotten a little bit, a little bit rougher even since we uh, these numbers were pulled and published. Uh, but if you think about what's affordable for a household making twenty five thousand dollars a year or less, and if we think about housing affordability as being somewhere in that thirty percent range, um, what that means is housing in our area, how like housing here in Allentown is completely out of reach for these households. There are no market-based solutions for uh, these 14,000 households, right, who um, need safe housing as much as any of us do. So we're kind of looking at this untenable housing situation and uh, the it's, it's difficult and it's challenging and it creates uh, just this kind of ongoing cycle of crises that it's hard to get your head above water. Um, but the good news here is uh, this is where nonprofits can really play a critical role in helping to balance our housing market. So a healthy housing market has housing that's uh, accessible and affordable to households at all different levels, for sure. Um, but that includes our households who are uh, very low income or extremely low income. And so uh, as a nonprofit, organizations like ours um, can really play a unique role in creating some balance, helping to address this specific kind of niche need in housing in our area uh, because our mission is different um, and our, our math is different. Um, so our mission is different because we wake up every day and think, how can we make housing safer, healthier, and more affordable for families who need it? Um, whereas, uh, you know, there are other pieces in the market, right, who have different purposes, which is all fine and well. 
um, but it's not ours. Ours is really to continue to, to provide that safe and healthy housing in perpetuity. Um, and our math is different uh, because we are a nonprofit. Uh, so we're able to think about all our resources that come in um, as being continually reinvested um, in our families and in our community in different ways. So um, I'm gonna uh, wrap up just by sharing a little bit about uh, what we're doing now, how we're going about diving into this particular challenge around affordable housing. And uh, we're doing that through what for us is a pretty exciting project um, that uh, is uh, kind of underway at this point. So I mentioned at the beginning that right now, uh, our housing program to date has really grown by partnering with landlords, but that as part of our business plan, we're working to move toward a new model of nonprofit owned housing. It's part of what makes our math work better. Uh, so this past summer, something pretty remarkable happened that really uh, fast forwarded us um, in that effort uh, quite a bit, which is that the congregation of the former Emanuel United Church of Christ, which is uh, located at 16th and Chew, so this building might look familiar if you are in and around Allentown, this area. Uh, this congregation had decided it was time um, after 100 years for them to close their doors, but they really wanted to make sure that their building, this beautiful property, uh, which had served the community for 100 years in lots of different ways, not just as a place of worship, but as a um, community meal location, as a polling place, as a place where there were uh, various different um, holiday activities. They really wanted to see the property continue to serve the community in a different way, for sure, um, but still in a very meaningful way. And so, uh, uh, through a very a number of conversations, the congregation uh, made the really extraordinary decision to gift this property to our organization. Um, so we took possession of this property uh, this past summer in June. And we have um, some big plans and goals uh, for this property. Um, and I'm going to just so take a good look there. And then I want to show just a few other images here. So uh, for me, it can be a little bit of a challenge to look at a building and imagine what it could be versus what it is. So I wanted to show these images uh, to give you a sense of what we are planning to do with this property. Uh, so the main floor, um, I should say too, that we are maintaining the historic nature of the building. So the, the, the exterior of the building will remain as it is. Uh, so maintain its historic nature. Um, and the project that we are working on is really a significant interior renovation of the building, uh, which will allow it to serve many, uh, several different community purposes going forward. So uh, the main floor of the building, we will convert into community space. Uh, community center space, uh, respite room care in partnership with our street medicine partners, uh, uh, the service hub space that I mentioned before, spaces like that where we can uh, provide on-site uh, services and supports that are open to the broader community, whoever needs them. Uh, and then what is now the sanctuary of the church it's a little bit difficult to tell in the photos, but it's 45 feet tall, so there's quite a lot of space in there. Um, so our, our goal for this property is to take what is now the sanctuary and convert it into three different levels. Um, so two of those levels will be housing, so we'll be able to build 12 new deeply affordable apartments um, inside of this space for to house 12 families. Um, and then the very uppermost floor will be uh, office space for our, uh, for our organization. So this just gives you a sense of um, the plans that we're working on now with the, uh, with the architects and the construction team. So I wanted to share this project. A, it's really exciting for us, as you can imagine, um, but because it's an important step toward addressing the housing needs for our low-income neighbors, um, because it's creating these 12 new units of housing, it's also an important step toward creating some of those safe spaces that I mentioned at the beginning that are really so, so uh, critical um, to any kind of healthy neighborhood or healthy community. Um, and for our organization, it's really a step that will lead to greater sustainability and long-term impact. Um, because again, as a nonprofit organization, uh, what we're able to do with this building, which is a little bit different than in a for-profit setting, um, is the, allow the building to cash, have a positive cash flow, even with our really very low income rents. So to give you a sense of what that would look like, 
uh, we would be able to rent apartments in this building beginning at just under $500 a month um, with opportunities to, to even subsidize it a little bit more, you know, more if needed. Um, and that means that people like Jody would be able to afford this housing. Um, and importantly for us, without our current um, need, which is uh, involves subsidizing down market rate rents uh, in order to reach those more affordable um, rental rates. So it means housing will be more affordable uh, without that kind of ongoing cost to subsidize uh, for-profit, <clears throat> um, excuse me, apartments. Um, and while there is a so th this is a this project is a significant undertaking. It's about a five million dollar project. We've raised about half of that funding to date. Um, but one of the wonderful things about this project is if we're able to raise those funds um, and uh, get this initial project started, uh, what it means is that this building will then become um, an asset that we can leverage to continue to invest in this type of housing um, in and around the Franklin Park neighborhood, which is really our target uh, geographic area. Um, so this is what we're doing. Uh, it's kind of where we are right now. I hope this was helpful in, uh, in uh, just explaining a little bit about who we are and what we do and why we do it. Um, this is the work that we're doing to try to create a bit of a healthier um, balance, housing balance in our neighborhood um, so that we can and have more of an adequate supply of, of appropriate housing um, for all of our residents. So uh, I'm going to, as I promised, return us to these questions. You can take a peek at those again uh, and just you know see if maybe some of your responsive have, responsive responses, excuse me, have changed. And if they haven't, that's okay too. Um, but then I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And I think we can uh, open it up for conversation. Thanks so much for listening, everyone.